Good morning, Crypto Warriors, and welcome back to Gem and Crypto episode 306. Today is Tuesday, December 18th, and I'm King. And I'm Bitcoin Z, and we're here to bridge the gap between cryptocurrency and the community Monday through Friday at 10 ish. At 10 ish. We are here. All right, let some people start to flow into here. Do we have a cryptic coin winner yesterday? Uh, we do not. However, the announcement about the wallet, uh, if you have a cryptic coin wallet on your desktop, they're actually going through upgrades uh, going into January, uh, actually using the sapling update from Zcash to make it faster. So if you have a cryptic coin wallet on a desktop, uh, that's why it can't be sent there. Uh, actually sign up on an exchange, LA token, P2P, B2B, X rates um or crypto bulls dot exchange you can use either one of those and use that cryptic coin address to send it there so for all the winners who haven't been able to receive it it'll be there by friday and shout out to shannon for working that out for us so all right what's going on tessa dylan game i peep antonio leroy madam crypto hello hello all maurice parks what's going on what up, what up? all right top story of the day the tech keeps improving. Blockstream launches fifth satellite streaming Bitcoin blockchain from space. Mm. Out of space, blockchain development firm Blockstream has expanded its satellite service and is now broadcasting the Bitcoin blockchain to all of Earth's major land masses for its report December 17th. Uh, so basically, when everybody's talking about what happens if the internet goes out, like Bitcoin be the only thing to worry about, oh, yeah. uh, there are now ways to circumvent it. What is going on Blockstream and their fifth satellite? Oh, yeah. Well, Blockstream CEO Adam Back has stated to the Forbes magazine that we see the increased robustness of the Bitcoin network and the lower cost of participation contributing to helping businesses rely on the service for backup and for emerging markets to use as their primary access to the Bitcoin market at a lower cost. So basically that means that people who are in first world countries, we can use satellites as a backup if you rather use computers, servers, uh, things of that nature. But for those people who don't have access to that technology, the satellite is available to anyone. So if you want to actually broadcast the network and send transactions, anybody in the world can do it. So we're getting closer and closer to what we call mass adoption because it can't happen unless everybody has access to it. So if we're close, with the technology part because a lot of people have phones a lot of people have computers but this basically solves the whole problem of connection to the blockchain uh in general so shout out to uh blockstream killing it right now it's the fifth satellite i'm sure they'll have more and it looks like they reportedly launched a new application as well programming interface api uh which let which lets the satellites be used to exchange encrypted messages with users paying for them using micropayments on lightning network uh, so that is on the move as well. That will also be huge. Oh, yeah. um, you talk about, you know, uh, Russia and U.S. is trying to shut down Telegram and go after uh, Pavel over there. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a basically a decentralized uh, exchange or a decentralized API where you can do encrypted messages and just pay using a micropayment. Yeah. I mean, again, if you're talking about moving communication for this is big. Um, oh, yeah. You know, uh, Twitter was used in this last run of overthrows, whether good or bad, and revolutions. So mm -hmm. if you get a messaging service like this where no one literally knows who you're sending a message to around the world. Yeah. And all you have to do is uh, use a few Satoshis to pay for it. Uh, that is going to be big news on the revolution front again. I mean, right now, they're, again, the companies are trying to hamper down on the Facebooks, on the Twitters, the YouTubes, as far as what content is being produced. We know some of those companies lean different directions as well politically, and they as well try to restrict some of the content being produced. But uh, again, you get something access to something like this. This is about to be coups left and right, oh, uh, yeah. revolutions left and right. Yeah, it's going to be people that's just like, you want to do what? Shut down us? Oh, no, that's not happening. We're just right. going to use Blockstream. So, yeah, shout out to Adam Back, man. There it is. One of the smartest people walking the earth right now. All right. United States crypto exchange Coinbase introduces digital asset conversions. Yes, they are rolling out new programs every week, as we have seen. Uh, but San Francisco-based crypto exchange and wallet service Coinbase has launched its new, quote, convert service, according to an official statement December 15th. Mm -hmm. uh, per the statement, it looks like the customers will initially be able to convert between Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Litecoin, and Zero X, and Bitcoin Cash. The service will be available on Coinbase.com. And the firm's apps as well. Oh, now yeah. that we've done that free Coinbase commercial, what exactly <laughs> does this Coinbase conversion do? Oh, yeah. Well, they basically do exactly what other wallets have already been doing. Uh, BRD Wallet is a good one uh, where you can actually convert uh, Exodus Wallet on your desktop. If you wanted to have a atomic swap between two different coins, that's already available. Right. Uh, Coinbase basically just made it uh, available to 
institutional people, so to say, and they only made it available for these seven coins. The other ones, you could trade anything for anything. You could trade. <laughs> you right. could literally the Exodus wallet. People yeah. are like I said, BRD wallet, Jack's wallet has it. Yep. Uh, um, and not only that, it's one of those things. I'll be interested to see the the rate doing it at Coinbase. Yeah. I guarantee you, they are destroying people on those rates. Yeah. And those fees to do uh to do those atomic swaps in house, whoever. And again, it's one of those things, people, where um, if you're doing it through Coinbase, you are going to be charged a mining fee, a transaction fee already. But mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing it through Coinbase, excuse me, you're going to be charged a mining fee for the transaction. But if you're doing it through Coinbase, I can guarantee you, you'll get that mining fee, the transaction fee, yep. and whatever other fee they want to put on top of it. PayPal uh, for fee. doing it. Because it's kind of <laughs> discouraged. Yeah. Right now, uh, it's kind of discouraged because that means you're keeping your crypto in the crypto. Yeah. In a place like Coinbase, which you would think they want you to keep your crypto in the crypto. Uh, they may actually, you know, be losing money up front because, you know, they're working with those alphabet <laughs> ladies and gentlemen who love to uh, keep everything in fiat currency. But again, you don't have to use Coinbase. To do this. We, we talked about cross atomic swaps before. It's huge. Uh, is you know, as it becomes cheaper and more efficient to do, you literally will not even need an exchange anymore yeah. as far as the trade on. You might need it to onboard and offboard money, mm -hmm. uh, but you won't need it to exchange on. So. Uh, I mean, good job to uh, Coinbase, though. Yeah, they're a little late to the party, though, I will say. <laughs> yeah. But they're just trying to grasp the straws. Because, like we said, centralized exchanges is what they got to do. And shout out to Coolworks. Uh, does Ethos Wallet do that? Not sure. haven't used it. And uh, Marnark. I haven't used those wallets. But, but a it, lot of wallets yeah, do so it's, a, it's a good amount of wallets that's starting to. Uh, I will say the good thing, too, is for new people who are coming on. Uh, this is what you talk about mass adoption. They're not going to know what a cross-atomic swap actually is. But they will know you can convert one cryptocurrency mm -hmm. to another. So that's good because this is the part where now we're getting to the technical side becoming a part of the back end where you know, users won't even see it or hear about the words yeah. or the technology behind it. They just know that, hey, I just know I can trade my Bitcoin for Litecoin, my Litecoin for Redcoin, my Redcoin for Dogecoin, <laughs> all on one exchange or one uh, wallet. Whereas you know the proper terminology and all that won't really matter. It's just the fact that they can do it. So. Yeah, true. Uh, let's see, Little Red Forbes said they want those fees that they miss out on when people move their assets from Coinbase to trade. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Got to try and corner the market while you can. Yes, yeah, Shannon. What do we think about the coming epic battle between crypto and FAMGA? For those who heard about that, I think it was a Medium article that came out today or yesterday or a few days ago. It's mm -hmm. talking about FAMGA, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, mm -hmm. which would be the new frontier uh, in the crypto space between us and those companies because, you know, kind of already it's already happened i mean with google and apple but they're using the technology basically just to do their own uh privatized version of everything all, all things crypto uh and i think the battle will be interesting yeah. honestly I, I you know it's unfortunate but it's kind of going back to mr robot where they had the e-coin or whatever mm -hmm. uh there's a strong possibility that the mainstream might lose on this one yeah. because you know, they've already believed in the hype. The story you did last week with the, you know, Bitcoin being you. What was it? What was the one? It's linked to what now is terrorists or money laundering yeah, or something. They said, yeah, it's linked to terrorists and money laundering. Yeah, I mean, we had random people calling us up about that one. So, uh, at this point, people, I have lost hope. But we'll see. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, honestly, every single big corporation that's ever been built is going to be challenged with crypto. These are the biggest, and in my opinion, they're the ones that are watched the most by the government. So, in my opinion, they won't have much to do with crypto on the you know investment uh, trading side, but I'm pretty sure they'll have some sort of digital currency on one of these platforms. I don't know which one. I know Microsoft has already started accepting it for games on Xbox, um, and we'll see where Google Amazon goes. So, I think what they'll end up doing is they'll stop fighting it after a while once they get it you know down to a price they want and then they'll join that they'll have no choice uh because when you have a stuff like blockstream to have satellites anywhere the next big company is probably being formed right now some 15 year old coming up with an idea doesn't even realize it uh, which will take it over to in my mind the next 10 years so they're either going to have to join or, or uh hey get ran over like everybody I, else i think they're going <laughs> to cash in first they're going to everything that you see in the crypto space where it's tokens projects mm -hmm. all this all these concepts yeah i think these companies are going to literally just try to recreate it and their own centralized version. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I think a lot of people are going to hop on board because they already use the products. It's going to be like, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do all the, I don't want the, you know, the United States dollar coin, but mm -hmm. I'll take this Apple coin. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see though. We'll mm -hmm. see because I mean, uh, unlike Apple, all those Famga uh, <laughs> companies there, with the exception of each other, there's nobody actually attacking them. Yeah. When the last time you saw 
a smear campaign for fa- I mean, with the exception of the things their CEOs and their execs do themselves. I mean, that's literally all their bad media attention yeah. is in house. Uh, but when was the last time you seen an attack on Facebook, on Apple, on Microsoft, on Google, on Amazon? Like a literal uh, an attack. The way you see these attacks on Bitcoin, you hear about the FUD and it's used for manipulation and money laundering and all that. Or you hear about Criminals. the... Right. It's, it's used for criminals <laughs> or uh, even some of the political attacks you see leading up to the election or even thereafter as of now. I mean, you're seeing them on an everyday basis. You don't see these same type of, of attacks on these companies and these five companies here. Uh, and much of that has to do with they control a lot of the media space uh, and they can control the narrative. But with all that being said, that is why I think once they start to uh, do their own tokens and wallets and all that. I mean, like, for example, you talk about wallets on the phone. Apple, all it takes is for them to say... This is the uh, unless you jailbreak your phone. This is the only crypto wallet you're going to have on it. So yeah, um, we'll see. Yeah, we got options though. I'm telling you now. That's what that's one thing they don't want to know is we got options. Well, that, that's the thing. I mean, oh, it'd yeah. be about people learning about yeah. it. But oh yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, they tried to ban crypto advertising already and gave up pretty quickly. Well, they I wouldn't say they gave up. They jumped in bid with companies that they allowed to advertise afterwards. Yeah. They so let they, Coinbase you know, come back. Right. So. <laughs> Uh, one good thing about having a tech sector is that they have to either make their own version or succumb to superior tech. That is very true in a sense. But again, uh, I think after what we've seen this year with regulations and the media, we cannot doubt the media and the power of marketing and advertising from these companies that have billions of dollars at their fingertips. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, I don't want to get the pie in the sky thoughts of this, you know. That, yeah, everybody will adopt Bitcoin. Now, I think literally the <laughs> next move is for every business to try to capitalize and cash in oh, yeah. on their own crypto. And then you got to remember, because if they do that, once it fails, then they can just go back. They can go use Bitcoin, whatever. They'll make money, though. We've seen this before. They, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it's going to fail. But in the meantime, before it fails, they're going to do a quick upfront money grab uh, where... You know, they do it right. They can make a lot of money. They can reallocate it other investments. And by the time it does fail, I mean, they've already made their money back 100 times over again. Yeah. So Facebook STOs coming. Yes, we did see that, Sergeant Crypto. Uh, did we see you guys did well during the YouTube crypto purge? So, uh, yeah. you know, that should have been a top story today. We didn't even uh, have it down. But for those who don't know, let's see if we can find this story. Uh, there was a crypto purge on YouTube. Where basically they want to get rid of quote unquote a lot of bots or so they say, which uh, oh, yeah, for that, us that, I'm happy about. We gain followers. Yeah, we don't <laughs> we don't use them. Yeah, uh, but like, a lot of these channels <laughs> actually do use them. So yeah, um, I saw somebody got sliced in half. Like, right, half of their followers gone overnight. So it, you know it's one of those things where if you get into the, the YouTube game, bots are a part of it. People use them. However, uh, you see real engagement from our people, from us. We've been giving away free crypto for over a year now. We've talked to people on social media. We're actually real people. Um, but some of these other crypto people, you know, they got to do what they got to do. But the purge was funny because I saw some people was like, what? I had 20000 now I got 3000 Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You... Here we go. Let me bring Nobody's story watching up. you, really. Uh, yeah, I'm glad. Thanks, Sergeant Crypto. You mentioned that. We didn't need to talk about that. Uh, the story, real numbers of crypto and blockchain channels exposed after YouTube purge. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like on December 14th, YouTube rolled out a purge of spam subscribers that saw the numbers dwindle for many channels. The crypto and blockchain <laughs> space fared quite well as most of the popular channels kept their numbers relatively intact. Uh, but yeah, you know, this is from, uh, I like how team YouTube did this on Twitter. Heads up creators, on December 13th, 14th, you may see a noticeable decrease in your sub count as we remove spam subscriptions. If spam is removed, you'll see a YouTube studio alert. Uh, This Mm -hmm. should help give you confidence that the subs you do have are real fans. Uh, (laughs) I'm sure that pissed off a lot of people. But what's even more messed up is how they kind of just did it in the crypto space. Yeah. Again, this is a bullish indicator. Mm -hmm. Why would YouTube literally just go to the cryptocurrency space for bots? I mean, they are literally everywhere on cross a ton of people channels. Hey man, they're trying to scorch earth every right. Everything. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a scorched earth against crypto. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it has some of the channels list, listed here, and uh, what type of hits they took. So yeah, that's that. Oh yeah, uh, shout out Shannon. Yeah, organic and GMO free crypto with us. Right. Definitely, man. Yeah. No additives, no preservatives, no corn syrup. <laughs> Again, it's pretty interesting though that they chose just to do crypto and blockchain channels. Man, wow. somebody's channel. Uh, who was that? 
A non ICO review, negative eighty five. Good gracious! How do you lose eighty five percent of your followers? Oh wow! This person got minus seventy three percent. And they did it for every yeah. Sergeant, I was gonna say they did it for all the YouTubes. I heard, but with crypto, the purge was crazy because most of the people in the crypto space they just came what a few months ago. So how did you get fifteen thousand followers? Okay. <laughs> Some of these people are say they did do it. Everybody, yeah, cool. yeah. So. I mean, listen, we've seen uh, channels out there that literally had two or three videos that have a, a couple of million followers. Um, mm -hmm. So it is what it is, people, you know? Oh, yeah. It is what it is. Speaking of crypto, uh, teen Bitcoin millionaire Eric Finman proclaims Bitcoin is dead in the long term. This is teen crypto star Eric Finman, uh, who has said that Bitcoin, quote, may have a bull market or two left in it. He sounds actually like one of these uh, old economists <laughs> saying maybe, maybe not. But that long term is dead in an interview with financial news site MarketWatch uh, yesterday, December 17th. Mm. For those who don't know Finman, he is famous uh, for his investment back in Bitcoin in 2011 when he reportedly bought it at the age of 12. At $12 a coin, the high schooler's $1,000 gift basically made him $4 million. So this is where, to me, um, a lot of these... You know, older investors, the Warren Buffett's of the world, kind of clown some of the crypto investors saying that a lot of these people don't know what they're talking about. I mean, again, they don't. when you're 12 years old and you get a thousand dollars, I'm already like discounting a lot of what you say. All right. Yeah, like, I mean, it's over. I don't man. think I saw a thousand dollars until like maybe high school graduation, like after everybody give you the gifts yeah. and you save up from work and stuff. I don't even know if my grandma got a thousand right now. You know so, what I mean? Yeah. So, and I'm gonna be honest with you, this is like that meme where they were like, Google and Amazon and Facebook, they all started in garages. And somebody was like, what's your excuse? And it was like, I didn't have a garage ever. I've never <laughs> right, had a garage right. in my life. <laughs> See, I didn't have a garage. Yeah. There it so is. People would be like, well, with a simple $50,000 investment from my grandparents, right. I was able to make... And it's like, what are you talking about? I right. mean, this, this, isn't, this isn't regular for a lot of the people that I grew up with. But with people like him, he's very notorious for tweeting out stuff like, who needs school? I became successful without it. I dropped out of high school and did blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, no. You received $1,000. Right. You bought something and you were lucky enough to get in in 2011. I mean, it's really actually like Warren Buffett who yeah, had like $1,000 back in the 40s, back 20s. In the 40s. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Like, who, goes a long way, doesn't just it, have when you're young. To throw around. I'm sorry you live in a different world, but oh, people don't just have that to throw around, man. Yeah, I mean... Uh, so this this is the guy now. How old is he? Uh, he's probably what? Maybe mm -hmm. like 19 now, 19 or 20. Um... And again, it's one thing to be one of those trading geniuses or mm -hmm. actual tech or genius in general, like uh, we have Ethereum with, um, mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now. Yeah. Um, I wanted to give him a shout out right now. Well, well. <laughs> you can't think of his name either? Hold up. What's Ethereum's person, people? Ethereum's person? Nah, Vitalik? Yeah, Vitalik. Yeah. Vitalik Buterin. Yeah. It's one thing to be an actual genius like Vitalik or... Some of these trading geniuses. I know uh, it was a couple of people that came over from the traditional trading world yeah. over to crypto and did well. But literally, when you're 12 years old and you're giving $1,000. Now, granted, sh hey, shout out to being on top of Bitcoin at the time and the yeah. $12 a coin. You can't argue that. Yeah. But, I mean, come on, man. If you let $1,000 sit there. Mm -hmm. I mean, and what do you have to lose? Yeah. You, That's another thing. Like, I mean... I could have bought. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I was twelve, somebody gave me a thousand dollars, and I was like, I really want something. I would just buy it. And then yeah. if you were like, Yeah, I can make some money later, then cool. But so, yeah, uh, shout out to Eric Feynman. Uh, I believe he did get that tap on the shoulder. He probably just. Oh yeah. Well, probably just spewing some fudge just to get it out there, man. It, is, it says in his interview with Marker Watch, the still teenage, so he probably isn't like eighteen, nineteen. Uh, Feynman remarked, "Bitcoin is dead. It's too fragmented. There's tons of infighting. I just don't think it will last." Uh, now. For that reason, again, what? that's what you kind of show your youth on that because the, the entire planet's too fragmented and there's wars 24 7. There's always infights. So you don't say, well, the human species will never advance or yeah. humans won't get anything Technology's done. Technology's not going anywhere. Because everybody fight. Of course, man. Like, what you scared of beef, yeah, son? That's what I'm saying. There's always fight. You better learn to enjoy yeah, that, yeah. man. Steve Jobs and Bill Relish Gates almost they, came oh, to blows a couple times. Come on, Jeff Bezos. Have you Jeff not Bezos? heard of his on, uh, environment at Amazon? For those who don't know, Amazon, uh, it's being ran like it's, it's almost as worse than Walmart as far as the uh, was it the uh, big what's it called the warehouses, yeah. the warehouses and shipping all that Amazon. I mean, they had a program where they literally were bringing like uh, officers mm -hmm. to Amazon, like military officers to come over and work at Amazon. And they, and they tell us how it is. It's like it's dog eat dog. We want people to argue. We mm -hmm. want people to conf uh, confront each other. We want people to go at each other's throats. 
Because at the end of the day, that means things are keep uh, going to become more efficient. Mm-hmm. Uh, things are going to get done the right way, and the people who shouldn't be there shouldn't. I mean, I've heard stories of people working at Amazon only making it two, two and a half years, where yes, they make a ton of money, but uh, I they're, they're it. just like, yeah, I can't work. I here. can't I mean, work. Him, you just seventy, you know, sixty, seventy hour weeks plus weeks, mm-hmm. um, and that's your full time life. But there's nonstop infighting and confrontation, and you see Amazon right now. That's my point. So mm-hmm. uh, his reasoning. People argue, yeah. people fight. This isn't gonna go anywhere. It's, hey, when it's a lot of money at line, people on the line, yeah. people are gonna fight, man. Yeah, so. get over it. But I'm sure he hasn't seen too much uh, conflict in his life. He's I mean, you getting a thousand dollars when you're 12, you can't see that much. Can't conflict. see that much. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I mean, honestly, I think his his uh, his confirmation bias comes from the fact that he wasn't a good student. So you know, a lot of times when people aren't good students, if they succeed in life, they spend the rest of their life. Telling people about when they wasn't a good student, they basically was like, "I didn't pass high school, I didn't do this, and look at me." And I, rappers do it all the time. Mm-hmm. It was like my teacher called me an idiot. Look at me, I'm a millionaire. Well, you still might be an idiot. You just became a rapper. Right. <laughs> so it's like it's not really like the money you made doesn't mean that you're somehow some genius, uh, especially when you just gave up the fact that you have your money stashed in Mexico uh, with the hard disk and your private keys. I saw him tweet out. He was like, "Even if I got kidnapped, I couldn't give away." what my wallet is it's like so how do you even have so whatever it's, it's all that good. and again that's that pie in the sky thing because yes. yeah listen if some people mm-hmm. kidnap you the right ones you'll give up those numbers, oh, you give them those numbers. i'm telling yeah. you that now <laughs> oh yeah they step on them glasses right you know what i mean you go blind that sounded this. that sounds really tough where, just walk you know, oh, they, <laughs> they still want to get anything uh, yeah i mean listen you don't have enough money to be, you know, for people to really care that much. But let's say you have four hundred million talking like that. Yeah, there's some, there's some people out there. <laughs> oh yeah, Iranian students in UK choose Bitcoin to circumvent U.S. sanctions. Oh yeah, oh yeah, wow. that's what I'm talking about. This is how you do it, man. <laughs> the Iran, the U.S. sanctions against Iran have cut the global economic corridors for the Western Asian country, and the latest victims, according to this article, of this ongoing political mishap are the students. Uh, this is a story from uh, you know our highly heralded Guardian here. Mm. According to the Guardian, hundreds of Iranian students in the United Kingdom have been denied banking services. Uh, I say the Guardian so you can do your own research as well. Mm-hmm. As a result, they are falling behind their payment dues, including their tuition fees. 23-year-old uh, law student at the University of Reading, for instance, had to been told, and again, this is from the Guardian, so I don't know how accurate this is, but... They're saying they have been told to either go to Iran and bring money and cash or face expulsion from his course. What? That's hilarious. That's why (laughs) why I say you got to do your own uh, due diligence on this one. But if it's true, it's pretty cool to see, you know, um, again, not saying it's right or wrong to be sanctioned. Don't know know what's going on there. But if you are sanctioned financially, Mm -hmm. that is something that, you know, is one of those things where your back's against the wall. Yeah. You don't expect me to have any type of uh, transferable value, but I'm supposed to live within your uh, confines of what's legal and illegal. And if yeah. I do anything else, even though I can't get my hands on value, it's considered illegal. Yeah. It's a lose-lose situation, essentially. Oh, yeah, man. Um, so, <laughs> His students going through this, too. Right. That's crazy. So opting for Bitcoin, if the solution is working, I mean, let's, mm-hmm. let's look more into it. Oh, yeah. And whenever I do uh, Bitcoin presentations from here on out, <laughs> One of the top things I'm going to discuss, because everybody wants to know price, everybody wants to know what's going on in the news. You have to talk about people in Iran, people in Venezuela, the fact that they're using Bitcoin for what it was built for. You can't ban anybody from uh, making money anymore. It's impossible because we have a decentralized currency. This is what it was made for. So whenever people tell you it's not working, what's the underlying uh, you know, fundamentals of it, this is, when you look at fundamental analysis, this is as fundamental as it gets. The fact that you can take away or sanction them from being able to receive money, trying to uh, essentially bankrupt them. And then they can say, well, we'll just use Bitcoin. So, I, I mean, it's literally the only time in, in the history of the world that, would, that you can say that. I mean, people would use things to barter back in the day if they got sanctioned. But this is something totally different. We're actually people who use Bitcoin at this point, say we go on a huge bull run in the next year, year and a half. Uh, these will be rich people. The, the sanctions really won't matter. So uh, shout out to the Iranian students standing up uh, to the sanctions, man. I mean, honestly, it's kind of funny when you when you really think about it and put it in perspective. Mm-hmm. A group of people are banning an another entire group of people from using money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that is as that's gangster hilarious. as it comes, people. Hey man, oh, that's man. what I actually went to go uh, do some research on that myself yesterday, just for fun. I was bored. I went to Bank of America, tried to set up a business account just to see what they would say. 
if you got Bitcoin in your name or anything with marijuana, oh, it's not happening. The lady, the lady it literally is. started laughing when I told we got, her. We got a lie. I told her the name of the company is Bitcoin Z, and she just bust out laughing. She was just like, "That's not going. That's red flag." As soon as you blah blah, and I was like, "I knew. I, I just wanted to see what y'all say." So I, I just kind of laughed because I was like, "Y'all will be out of business in five to ten years if y'all think that way." Because everybody doesn't need banks, so it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Sanctions. Uh, sanctions. I hear sanctioning people. Don't even need the internet now. Exactly. Right. You got satellites. Satellites. Now. All right, for the free cryptic coin today, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. So for our free cryptic coin, uh, the satellites that Blockstream actually uh, have sent up, how do you think it will affect the Bitcoin market? Uh, how do you think it will affect the global market as a whole? Uh, let us know what you think. Put your cryptic coin address, and we'll send those free cryptic coins. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure you smash mm -hmm. that like and share buttons, that tag that thumbs up for those who have no clue what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're listening to us on iTunes, uh, podcast, Spotify, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio. Make sure you leave a review as well. We much, uh, we definitely appreciate that. Thanks for all the support, and yes, we sir. will talk to you all tomorrow. Until then, cheers. Cheers.